Oh, why are we doing this man again? Well, you know, he's so willing to talk. I mean, I'm curious to see what his defense was going to be. And as you are about to find out... I didn't know. Now, obviously, I am not going to sit there and make you watch this whole thing. I found some key points that one is going to sit there and say what his defense is coming up through and why he's so confident, why he ain't running like the other ones. And then one that feeds in to why he's done this, the kind of personality that pretty much leads back to his upbringing. Sam, here's where I want to start this conversation, if we could. Um, I think at this point, there are two ways uh, to view what has happened at FTX. And I know we'll get into all of the details in a moment, but I'm just going to go very basic. Uh, There's a generous view, and the generous view is that you are a young man who made a series of terrible, terrible, very, very bad decisions. The less generous view is that you have committed a massive fraud, that this is a Ponzi scheme, a manipulation of the system. And I want to start there because I think that there are so many people who have that question, which is, what is this and what did happen? All right, so he really wanted to talk. <gasps> I kept his mouth open. I want to. I want to talk. Look, thanks for having me. And um, and at the end of the day, I I was CEO of FTX, and that means whatever happened, whatever it happened, I had a duty. I had a duty to all of our stakeholders, to our customers, uh, our creditors. I had a duty to our employees, to our investors, and and to the regulators of the world. All right, so we let that play a little bit. So you can get the full view. He's got his hands in his lap. He's probably moving his hands a little bit. We can't see him, so we don't know. His back is hunched over. His head's kind of bowed down. So he's in a submissive position. He is coming to the altar of forgiveness, and he is about to spiel his story. And I've seen this before. This is when your child has been sat down to have a conversation with you because they've done something wrong, and they have come to you for forgiveness. Sadly, a lot of adults have the same behavior pattern. So he has thought this out. Uh, He's got some emotional, he's admitting, he knows the formula. He has to admit to a wrong. And this is why we're seeing the comfort. We're seeing the submissive position, but we're also seeing the comfort because we're still moving around. The, The spine is still loose, but we're only in the submissive position. I to do right by them, to make sure the right things happen to the company. And, uh, Clearly, I didn't do a good job of that. Um, clearly, I um, I made a lot of mistakes. Or, or... And you see the movement that's coming through. So the spine is still loose. It still moves. The head is still moving. And we're staying in the submissive position. Things I would give anything to be able to do over again. Um, I didn't ever uh, try to commit fraud on anyone. I, I was excited about the prospects of FTX a month ago. Um, I saw it as a thriving, growing business. I was shocked by what happened this month. And, you know, reconstructing it, I, where are there things I wish I had done differently? Well, let's, let's talk about some of the things you can... And then you see the believe me, like, boy, there's some things I wish I had done differently. And then he looks up to, I'm going to assume there's a monitor in front of him so he can see who he's speaking to. Basically, when you see this kind of thing, the expectation that I tend to get is... He's looking at me now. He's trying to see if I bought it. He's looking at you or this gentleman right here to see if there's going to be any mercy. You, you would want to have done differently. Uh, but I don't want this to be an abstraction uh, for folks because it's a lot of big numbers um, and often doesn't feel human. Um, one of the, the letters I got, uh, I want to read to you, Sam, um, because it's from a gentleman who said that he lost his life savings. Um, And the subject line is, Sam Bankman-Fried stole $2 million from me. Says, Andrew, can you please ask SBF why he decided to steal my life savings and the $10 billion more from customers to give to his hedge fund, Alameda? Can you ask him why his hedge fund... So, as this letter is being read to him, it's pretty damaging. Can you ask him why he stole my life savings? And he goes a little bit tight-lipped, but you see the head movement, like, yeah, yeah, I, I stole it. And this is, again, that personality of bad parenting. This is the MO. He's like, yes, I have to admit to it because this is the formula that has always worked for me. I have to admit the wrongs that they know about. He was leveraging long all of these 
S coins. I'm going to keep it polite for the kids. Please ask him if he thinks, the, thinks what happened was fraud. And that's another thing that's part of the personality, too. I'm going to keep it polite for the kids. And he smiles like, oh, look, he's joking with me. I'm going to try and get that reciprocation that, oh, this guy's not joking with him. He's a poor reader of body language for that fact. And that just comes from the parenting. This is a bubble world he's lived in. He's not a psychopath or a sociopath because of genetics. Human beings through life learn how to behave. And if the, the reward is to behave like a sociopath, then that is the behavior you will get every time. And if you already are one because of genetics, you're going to be a really good one. These are the kinds of letters that I've been getting repeatedly over the past several days. What do you tell this, this man? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm deeply sorry about what happened. Um, here's, you know, the long and short of what happened. And, and I'll start by saying, uh, just to, to make a distinction here, you look at the U.S. platform, you look at the international platform. The U.S. platform uh, is a U.S. regulated platform with American users. To my knowledge, that's fully solvent. That's fully funded. And, uh, you know, I believe that withdrawals could be opened up today. And everyone could be made whole from that, that none of these problems plagued the, the U.S. platform. So we go into this U.S. platform that that is actually solvent. I'm sitting there thinking, oh, okay, he's actually opened up to this. He's not relaxed. And we're seeing that hand movement that he's grabbed onto an idea that he doesn't want to let go. I was like, all right. He's not relaxed. We're really stiff, but we are opening up in the sense of, you know, our arms and holding on to an idea. So it, it does give credence that there may be actually solvency in the U.S. one. That may be why the U.S. really isn't going after him. And there's a lack of fear. Um, then you look at the international platform, uh, you know, for their non-U.S. users. And uh, I mean, as the letter says. Uh, All right. So the U.S. platform, he's got that ball. I'm going to assume now mentally that we've seen it because he's now put it away, that it must be the solvency of it. So it's like, okay, there must be some solvency there. All right, I guess you can't really say some. It's either is or, or it is not. But then he has the international that comes out. He has the ball and he puts it down. Like, oh, I guess there ain't nothing there. <laughs> nothing. Alameda Research did have a long position. And the international platform, it's a margin trading platform. It's a derivatives platform. It's a platform where all the clients were, you know, going on placing something as collateral and using that to put on a position, whether that's a futures position, a spot position, a borrow. Um, and you know what the exchange was storing was the collateral from all of those positions. Uh, Alameda Research was you know, one of those that put on positions there. And as I try and reconstruct this um, you know, over the last month, I, I have limited access to data, but um, my, 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 my view of it um, from what I have been able to see is roughly that, um, you know, basically, look, a year ago, um, Alameda had, I think, something like 10% leverage, you know, had something like 10 times the assets of the position that it had on. Over the course of the last year, there were a number of market crashes um, that drove the value of those assets down and the leverage up. This is just jargon that is just being drawn out. And I'm going to break it down Barney style. Basically, 2008 with the housing happened to this. So when the gamblers all lost, you all lost. And that is Banking 101. And apparently he's putting this squarely on Alameda. Um, I think it was, to my knowledge, still under 2x leverage, you know, as of uh, a month ago. Um, you look at the, what happened this month and, uh, you know, in a few days, all out, um, I mean, PR assault, which led to a total market collapse in a pretty short period of time, no bid side liquidity. Um, uh, I think more than $10 billion wiped off in the matter of days. And uh, realistically speaking, no ability for FTX to be able to, to liquidate that position and generate everything that was owed from it. But I it. think the bigger question is where... So he has explained his apology letter at the uh, altar of forgiveness. And he's feeling pretty good about it. You see the, the brightness has lifted up in his face. He takes a deep breath. <sighs> 
he's given you his apology. And as far as he's concerned, it's rock solid, man. Alameda got the loan from, yep. which is to say that there is a view that this is about commingling of funds. Right. And, and, and in that letter uh, that I just read you, um, this gentleman actually copy and pasted the terms of service for FTX into the email. And I just want to read you this. It says, none of the digital assets in your account are the property of or shall or may be loaned to FTX trading. FTX trading does not represent or treat digital assets and users accounts as belonging to FTX trading. So how is it? So now we see he's gone down even lower on what this letter is telling him. So this individual in the letter, from what we can hear, because we don't see anything, is making the case that apparently he was not trading with whatever funds he had on there. And we're just going to keep that in mind. We don't want to go into speculation of, well, he may have done this, that, none of that. But we see Sam start to literally go down even further. Hmm. Okay. Possible that Alameda had this loan of such a large size. So there's that piece from the terms of service. Um, but there were a number of other parts of the terms of service and a number of other parts of the platform on top of that. There is the borrow lending facility where users were lending billions of dollars of assets to each other, um, you know, collateralized by assets on the exchange. Um, you had, uh, and you had obviously futures contracts where there are leverage positions on. Now, of course, all of this, um, it, it, it's meant to be the case. So he's whitewashed the terms of service that was copy and pasted from that. And that's what he's holding on to as his truth, which is why you see him. He's lifted up. He's raised up. It was like, oh, that's I, I know that part. He was part of the borrow and lending thing. Yes, that's what it was. And it was Alameda's fault. Brightness in the eyes, smile across the face, lifts up, can put his hands on the side of the chair. Yeah, that's that's who it was. It's that these are positions where FTX could, uh, if it needed to, margin call those positions and close them down in time such that it would cover all of those, uh, you know, all those shorts, all those liabilities. Obviously, that wasn't the case here. And that's a massive failure of oversight of risk management um, and of uh, you know, diffusion of responsibility from, from myself running FTX. But, um, but, let's but just, but just yeah. make this very straight. Was there commingling of funds? That's what it appears like. It appears like there's a, been a, a genuine commingling. We haven't seen him shake up until really about this point. He's really shaking here. And it's coming through. You see it. And I'm assuming it's the legs. He must have his arms back on his legs so that we can actually see it. And talking about commingling of funds apparently is a very big stressor. Commingling of the funds that are of FTX customers that were not supposed to be commingled with. And then again, now, because we see the shaking, then now we see the rocking back and forth. Your separate firm. I ain't knowingly commingle funds. And... Again, one piece of this, you have the margin trading, you have... We lawyers speak it. I didn't knowingly commingle funds. And it's like, okay, all right. Well, I've had enough of being lied to and manipulated. When you come to the altar of mercy, of forgiveness, just expect to be lied to, manipulated, and hopefully brainwash you into believing their side of the story. But I want to go to a part that I think is hilarious. I, I want to go back to the Alameda piece of it for just an, another moment, yeah. if you... If you'd, if you'd stick with me here, uh, you had told investors and regulators that you were not involved in Alameda decision making. Um, yeah. And yet, in the case, uh, Alameda invested $1.15 billion in Genesis digital assets um, without your consultation or approval. That, that's the question. And my understanding is you... See, a bad parent wouldn't even bring this up. They would sit there and take that first story that they had and just be like, okay, fine, I'll buy it and defend you from that point. That's your story and you're sticking to it. So am I. Don't do it again. But our little snake in the grass over here in his little suit, he's being the good parent today. And he's calling out some BS. He starts to hear that. The body kind of like stops. The eyes get really, really big. He looks up and the mouth wants to open. It's like, oh, oh no, oh no. Mom found the knife. Shit. Also served on the board of Genesis Digital Assets. And so I'm trying to understand how you wouldn't have been involved brain is just is lost it's like, oh man she not only found the knife i forgot to clean it oh hell no eyes have gone closed the mouth is even twisting i'm about to get an ass whooping with alameda 
So I was somewhat involved with uh, venture investing, and that was done out of a separate entity um, than you know any of Alameda's proprietary trading. Um. So we're filtering it. We're shaking uncontrollably. We're not giving very good eye contact. Uh, than its activity on FTX or other. And we are giving a whole lot of negative head shakes on it. It's like, oh my lord, the stress induced. Prior to that, the eyes, the mouth, the body. Now he's just going to try and lawyer speak his way through it. That is not his bloody knife. He don't know where it came from. Crypto exchanges. Um, uh, but I was uh, consulted on. And we're starting to hear the uh, uh, uh song. So much love for the uh, uh, uh song as the brain desperately looks for a way to get out with lawyer speak this situation. Uh, on some of its, its, its VC um, investments, including with GDA. What, what are your lawyers telling you right now? <laughs> are, uh, are they suggesting this is a good idea for you to be speaking? Uh, no, they are very much not. Um, Oh, he just realizes what he's done. He starts looking away, looking actually for a path out. He doesn't know what to do. The stress in the face, the mouth, the eyes, the wanting to avoid even looking at the monitor in front of him. And he's looking, I'm assuming that direction is where a door is at. Like, how can I get out? And the audience has said it best. Be a good parent. Don't raise a Sam. If you like it, please share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.